One of my earliest gardening memories is discovering that a dried marigold flower actually contains dozens of marigold seeds. I couldn't believe my luck, free seeds. I planted one of those seeds and I was hooked on gardening for life. If you learn the basic principles of seed saving, I think you'll be hooked too. In today's video, we'll talk about the benefits of saving seeds, some of the basic principles of which seeds you can save. We'll talk about when to harvest seeds and how to store those seeds once you've harvested them. But if we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. One of the biggest advantages of saving seeds is the ability to have seeds that are adapted to your region. If you save seeds from year to year, you'll have access to the seeds that you love indefinitely. Learning how to save seeds also saves you money. One of my favorite parts of saving seeds is having plenty of seeds to share with others. Set aside some seeds to plant next year and then share the extras in a seed swap or donate them to a local seed library. Garden seeds also make great gifts for gardeners. There are a few basic principles about seed saving that it's important to understand so that you can be successful saving your own seeds. The first thing to understand is there are different types of seeds and some seeds are good for saving and others should be left to the seed saving experts. For successful seed saving, it's important to save seeds that will be true to type. You don't want a seed that has been cross-pollinated. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of garden lingo so that you have a basic understanding of which type of seeds it's great to save. Self-pollinating crops typically pollinate themselves without help from insects or other plants. Self-pollinating plants such as beans, peas, and tomatoes are good choices for first-time seed savers. Open-pollinated plants, plants such as pumpkins, squash, cucumbers, and corn will cross-pollinate, meaning the seeds from one variety can be affected by pollen from a neighboring plant. If you are growing more than one variety of a type of plant nearby each other, do not save seeds from resulting fruit. They may be cross-pollinated. A great example of this happened to me. I was growing cantaloupe and Armenian cucumbers next to each other. I saved the seeds from Armenian cucumbers and planted them the next year. The result was not Armenian cucumbers. Armenian cucumbers are actually in the melon family. So the cantaloupe and the Armenian cucumber seeds had cross-pollinated. The resulting seeds produced this hybrid, which was not nice to look at and tasted even worse. Most heirloom seeds are good choices for saving seeds. This seed has often been handed down for several generations, normally at least 50 years. What about hybrid plants? Do not save seed from hybrid varieties. Hybrid plants, often designated with an F1 distinction, are two varieties that have been cross-pollinated to produce a third variety with the desired traits from the parents. Seed from hybrid plants will not be true to type. When you decide to save seeds from a plant, you are encouraging whatever traits that plant had to continue. Save the best tasting and healthiest fruits and plants from which to save seeds. Select characteristics you want to continue by saving seeds from plants with those attributes. If a plant struggled with disease or just didn't perform well, do not save seeds from that plant. We don't want to continue that line of seeds. Seeds for saving must be fully developed on the plant or on the vine. It's a little bit different for each type of seed that you want to save, but the basic principle is that the best time to eat the fruit may not be the best time to save the seed. The life cycle of the plant concludes with producing and developing seeds. In order to save seeds, you need to be patient and let those seeds fully develop on the plant. Here are a few tips about when to save a particular type of seed. Beans and peas are one of the simplest ways to begin your seed saving journey. Beans and peas are ready to harvest when the pods turn brown on the vine and shrink against the seeds. Radishes, lettuces, and greens flower and then produce seed pods. It's best to let those seed pods fully develop on the plant and turn brown before harvesting. Bag the seed pods so that the dry seeds don't spill or harvest those dry seed pods each day as the seeds are ripening. Pepper seeds are ripe when the peppers have reached their full color. To harvest pepper seeds, simply slice the pepper open to get the seeds off the central stem. Cucumber seeds are ripe when that cucumber is overripe and yellow. It's definitely past the stage that it's best to eat. 
harvest that overripe cucumber and set it aside for a couple of weeks and then harvest the seeds on the inside. Artichoke seeds are ready after the flower fully develops and you start to see kind of a fuzz form on that artichoke. At that point, you can pull the seeds up. Tomato seeds are ripe when the tomato is full colored, not firm, but a little bit soft to the touch. Asparagus seeds are ready when those red berries that hold the seeds begin to shrivel and the seeds inside have turned black. Roselle seeds are ready when that calyx fully dries and begins to separate a little bit and gets really dry. Go ahead and clip that calyx off, put it in a paper sack, and you can often crack roselle seeds open like a pecan and those seeds will be inside. Malabar spinach seeds are ready when those seeds are nice and dark. To harvest dill seeds, leave the seeds on the plant until brown and dry. Cut off with a length of stem and allow to dry in a paper sack. The seeds will fall to the bottom. This same process also works with other herbs like basil and cilantro. You can harvest seeds from any type of sunflower, not just the big mammoth varieties. To save seeds from sunflowers, wait until the petals have fallen off and then cut the sunflower leaving a few inches of stem and let it dry with the seeds facing up. Wildflowers are one of my favorite things to save seeds from. Most wildflowers develop seeds and drop seeds naturally and that is how they come back year after year. Learn to recognize what the seeds look like and leave a few blooms on the plants at the end of the season. Allow some to drop so that they can come back next year. Also save some of those seeds to plant in other areas of your yard or to share with friends. A common method for saving wildflower seeds is to allow those seeds to fully develop on the flower and then snip those flower heads at the end of the season and leave them in a paper sack. Typically, those seeds are going to fall to the bottom of the sack and then you can remove the other parts of the flower. So some of the seeds we talked about are dry seeds that you allow to dry naturally and a couple of the seeds we talked about are wet seeds. So it's important to understand the different methods for harvesting and getting those seeds ready to save. Wet seeds such as tomatoes and cucumbers often need to be fermented to remove that pulp and germination inhibiting substances on the outside of the seed. As those seeds ferment, the viable seeds will float to the bottom. Those are the ones you want to save and you can discard all that pulp and unviable seed. After the coating is removed, spread those viable seeds out on paper plates or wax paper allow the seeds to completely dry before you save them. Saving dry seeds is pretty simple. My favorite method is just to put them in a paper sack and allow them to dry completely in that paper sack. Any extra moisture won't be trapped inside that bag and so problems with mold and mildew are alleviated. Once seeds are thoroughly dry, it's important to store your seeds correctly. For short-term storage, store the seeds in paper envelopes. For longer storage, store in airtight containers. Be sure to label the seeds with the type of seed and the year they were harvested. Store seeds in a cool, dark place. For the longest storage life for seeds, store seeds in the freezer. If there's a plant in your garden and you're not sure if you can save the seeds, look it up. Research how to harvest and save that particular type of seed. Enjoy saving and sharing those seeds with others. Hopefully you learned something new about saving seeds today. If you have more tips to share, share them in the comments. I'd love to learn more. Thank you so much for watching.